Thank you and good morning. That video gave you a taste of what I want to talk to you about for the next seven minutes. And at the risk of being cocky, I'm going to propose to you that what I'm about to tell you is the most audacious thing you're going to hear in the next 48 hours. After all, the clock is ticking and I don't have time for modesty. Because what I'm going to talk to you about is the most powerful force for ending global poverty on the planet. It's not a new technology. It's not breakthrough science. It's not about nanotubes or genetic engineering. In fact, it's not even about 3D printing. Instead, it's about the untapped potential of a 12-year-old girl. In fact, it's about the untapped potential of 250 million girls currently living in poverty globally. If a girl in the developing world, an adolescent girl in the developing world, can stay in school, can stay safe, and can stay sa safe healthy, she can alter her life trajectory and not only escape global poverty, but also lift her family and her community with her. If an adolescent girl in the developing world receives seven years of education, she can wait to get married four extra years and have 2.2 fewer children than she otherwise would. A single year, extra year of primary school can boost her eventual wages by 10 to 20% income that she is significantly more likely to invest in her family than is a boy. And the children she eventually does have will also, therefore, likely be more educated and more healthy. She begets a virtuous cycle. This is the girl effect. We at the Nike Foundation did not invent it. We just gave it a really, really great name. And we also worked with organizations and institutions like the World Bank, to quantify its effect on global economies and to prove that it's something more than just a feel-good notion. And the numbers are astonishing. In India, the fact that four million adolescent girls every year become mothers means that the country loses $383 billion of their potential lifetime earnings. In Ethiopia, if adolescent girls can complete secondary school, their potential contribution to the economy of their country over the course of their lifetimes could equal $6.8 billion. So it's clear that there is this huge potential opportunity for adolescent girls to help us end the, the problem of intergenerational poverty, yet this opportunity continues to glow unclaimed and unrealized. Even though the multiplier effect of girls and global development is well established, the money and the resources are not following the evidence. By some estimates, less than 1% of total global aid flows reaches adolescent girls. And the problem is even more complex than the fact that these girls are the most marginalized constituents on global political aid and development agendas, because they're also the most marginalized and vulnerable people within their own homes and within their own communities. As the recent abductions in Nigeria have all too clearly reminded us, even when a girl is able to buck this trend, even when she's fortunate enough to find herself in school, she's not guaranteed of her personal physical safety while she's there. And when a family in the developing world faces a financial crisis or hard times and has to remove a child from school, it is the girl who has to leave. In our insights work in field with these families, we've heard the sentiment underlying this action described as, if I educate my girl, it's like watering my neighbor's lawn. And let's leave aside the girl's ability to control her educational destiny. These girls very often can't even control the destiny of their own bodies. One in seven girls in the developing world will be married by the time that they are 15. And the leading cause of death for adolescent girls in poverty is not disease, it's not violence, it's not a natural disaster, it's pregnancy. And by the way, these are just the numbers, the facts, the figures that we have. There is far too much that we don't even know, because like in so many areas of their lives, for the purposes of actionable, reliable data, these girls are practically invisible. For example, there is not a single global data set that can tell us the resources available to an adolescent girl in poverty outside of her home. There's not a single global data set that tells us what happens to these girls in a humanitarian crisis, even though we know that they are disproportionately harmed. 
So you may be asking yourself, why am I here today talking to all of you instead of talking to policymakers or aid workers? Well, let's recap. We have a huge, hairy, intractable human problem, the problem of intergenerational global poverty on the one hand. We have a huge, quantifiable, clear, untapped resource that could help break this cycle on the other hand. Yet neither governments, nor business, nor the not-for-profit sector seem able to respond. Doesn't this sound like a market failure? Doesn't this sound like precisely the kind of challenge that the X Prize was established to solve? We're here today because we know that we need new approaches, breakthrough solutions, disruptive innovators to help unleash the girl effect and to end intergenerational poverty, not in 100 years, but in 20 years. We're here today because we need a moonshot for girls. And what that moonshot might look like is for, the, for all of you out there, you brilliant thinkers, to consider over the next 48 hours, and also for the brilliant innovators that an XPRIZE can attract. But even if we consider some of the basic things that many of us in this room are currently looking at and tackling, the problem of access to mobile phones, global access to information, and big data, we can see what the potential might be. There's been much discussion, many of us are involved in it, about the potential transformation of connecting the last mile user to goods and services. But the adolescent girl isn't just on the last mile. She's stuck and isolated in a home at the end of the last road off of that last mile, more cut off than the father, the brother, and even the mother that many of us are considering. She is quite literally the hardest to reach end user on the planet. So merely aiming to solve for people in poverty will not work for this girl. And if it doesn't work for this girl, it will not solve for global poverty. Even if she has a phone in her home, she's the last to benefit. She may not have access for more than minutes a day or even more than minutes over several days. But in spite of this, or maybe because of it, she's also incredibly resourceful. She can figure out how to borrow a phone or to maximize the limited amount of time she has to get a taste of connection or to even transact min minimally or find some essential information. So what if we could figure out how to deliver to this girl in a way that significantly reduces her isolation or significantly improves her education, her health, her safety, her economic well-being, even if nothing else about the extreme circumstances under which she lives changed? And what if the mechanism for delivering her what she needs could also help us fill in these data gaps, could help us create a reliable, accurate, real-time, global picture of relevant indicators and the conditions confronting her. We know that you have to solve for this adolescent girl to solve for global poverty. But we also are not proposing an X Prize for girls. We're not even proposing a girl-focused X Prize. Instead, we're proposing something that actually might be as audacious as what I started with that in every single X Prize that purports to tackle global poverty or purports to reach the unreachable, you must start by designing for the adolescent girl in global poverty. Because if you can solve for her, you will solve for everyone. And in fact, thinking about this girl first when designing a prize rather than last, as is usually the case, will likely accelerate our shared goal and shared ambition to reach every human being on the planet, man, woman, boy, girl, and give them access to the basic resources, services, and goods to which they are entitled. And trust us, we know how difficult this is. We've been thinking about this for 10 years. But we also know that the collective will, the collective resources, the collective know-how, and the collective brilliance is out there in this room, outside of this room, in the adolescent girl. So we're up for this challenge, and we hope you are too. Thank you very much.